some of the most glamorous palaces of entertainment and feature in cityscapes around the world. They're temples of music. And today there are two opera houses in London. This one and the Colosseum. Charlie, are you there? Yes. Fantastic. Nice to see you. Great. Thank you so welcome. much. Yes. Welcome, welcome. You're coming into a tenor dressing room. Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> yep. Okay. okay. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, tell me a little bit about the 18th century divas. I'm not saying you're a diva, OK? Absolutely. Don't say that. No, I'm a great colleague, Francesca Cuzzone. Now, I'm not saying she was ugly, but apparently people described her as plain-faced. Now, if somebody described me as plain-faced with a pretty voice, I think I'd have a bit of a strop as well, so I'm not surprised she was a diva. Rather exciting, isn't it, to be at the Soane Museum today, John Soane Museum, looking at these incredible 18th century prints by Hogarth. It's an absolute thrill. I was fascinated to find, looking at this as the second print in the, in the sequence, The Rake's Progress, and the rake in the room with him is a composer sitting at a keyboard yes. who's back to us. And we think and it, it might be handled. We, there was a great deal of suspicion about opera. Uh, one, th Addison, the uh, journalist and poet, said that it was ridiculous for the English to sit in a room and listen to foreigners singing to them in a language that none of them understood, namely Italian. Hello, and welcome to the Royal Opera House. So fantastic Hello, to see Mrs. you. Observation is very simple, isn't it? I mean, that's, I suppose, the way things were in the 19th century. I don't really quite understand what it was at the moment. I think later on, when I retire, I would look <laughs> back and think, wow, those were the days. It was meant to be. The escape is very land, you know, it's an alternative to your humdrum ordinary life. Yeah. You walk into this fantastic fantasy. Yeah. Where we're standing now was part of the floor, oh, wasn't it? Which was part of the food and fish market, a going concern, a great wholesale market that moved. And then a lot of rebuilding took place. And people were fearful about people fearful of change. It is on, you know, on the piazza, London's first square from yeah. the 1630s, in the Gershwin phase. Stage, when you're singing, yeah. can you hear yourself singing for a start? Yeah, I mean, just but technically the acoustic is good. I don't all the opera houses oh, you no. can, can you? No, no, there's a big difference in every opera house. Yeah. You know, some have wonderful acoustics where you can whisper and hear everything. Yes. Others are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a concert master, of course. Can you um, explain exactly what the role of a concert master is at the Royal Opera House? The person is responsible, we can say, for, for uh, perfect tuning of the orchestra. So Concert master, sometimes called as a leader, you need to provide a strong connection between the conductor and the rest of the, orchestra. Rest of the orchestra. Basically, and actually, it's a next after the conductor, next musician responsible for the quality of the performance. But I enjoy dressing up for both houses, as a night at the opera in London is such a special occasion. The building is incredibly heavily constructed to accommodate everyone at once who then gather in the great hub, the auditorium, where the whole world comes together. There is a globe, there is a world meeting in that space. The rich, the poor, yes. um, enjoying the unification, right? but being unified by the art, by the performance. All the world is here. I mean, my office is backstage, yeah. but um, I can choose to walk through the auditorium to get to it. At lunchtime, I get my sandwich and I sit, sit right at the top of the balcony and yeah. either watch the technical teams changing the set yeah. or just sit in an empty auditorium. And it's amazing. You kind of get the sense of a hundred years of memories and ghosts and opera. Yes. Actually, I heard there was a ghost. There's definitely a soldier that people have seen. Yeah. I mean, it really is a vast theatre, isn't it? It's huge. It's, yeah. it's the biggest in London, I think. It is, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. seats um, two, three, Five nine, so one minute before midnight, two, three, five, nine. So, George, what are the acoustics like here on stage? Well, there is actually a sweet spot. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember who told me. It may have yeah. been, may have been yeah. here. Ooh, show me where. I think it was Damon Evans, actually. Mm -hmm. You see just where those chairs are? Yeah. If you sing from that spot, it's as though you've just walked into this enormous sort of bubble of acoustic. Yeah. 
and you'll notice all the veterans sort of gravitating towards it. You, you sing from there, it's as though everything gets loud all of a sudden. And How the whole fantastic. place starts reverberating. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and you sound good. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> we are very lucky that it's here and very lucky that it continues to function so well, yeah. fulfilling the purpose for which it was made. Well, you know, over 100 years ago. Well, here we are, backstage. The, this is the stage, of course. That's yes. the back of the stage, that's the yep. front of the stage. That's the art. People will be over there. Yeah, yeah. So this is the screen over the, over the set. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, obviously, I think it's relatively compressed, isn't it? Because yes. Because these Compared are to the massive auditorium, you kind yeah, of think yeah, it's yeah. I mean, going to be a lot bigger, don't you? Just a reminder, these are machines and they are... Everything's an issue, space is an issue, money is an issue, so you um, compress your, your functional bit. In front of Matrim's mind when he built this theatre, unlike his grand opera house in Belfast, the seats in the upper circle were as just as comfortable and just as well upholstered as the seats in the rest of the auditorium. So you did not have to sit on shiny wood, you could actually sit on comfortable plush. And in fact, in the 50s, the Colosseum was used as a cinema with an enormously wide screen. The greatest sensation at this time was the presentation of King Kong at the theatre, which had several showings at the Colosseum every day for months, with 10,000 people seeing the film at the theatre every day. So there's going to be a really strong future, I think. Um, Vienna and Berlin have three opera houses. We have two. We're one of the world's greatest cities. Two feels like we're shortchanging London, I think. Despite, you know, the last two, three years with all of the craziness that happened yes. with the pandemic and everything, and a lot of dark talk about uh, the business and the, the whole industry yeah. itself. I, I never doubted that it would come back. Opera houses will evolve as they react to economic pressures and fashion. Opera has always been a multimedia entertainment and one of the most expensive art forms. And although theatres respond to and benefit from modern technologies like streaming, there will probably always be people who prefer to gather to experience live performance by real people, talented singers and dancers in beautiful theatres. <laughs> Thank you.